interferometry is being used to detect gravitational waves coming from space. Einstein's general relativity included gravity as an effect that distorts space. The bigger an object's gravitational field, the more the space around it will be distorted. If heavy objects are moving, then the disturbances in the space distortion around them will propagate outwards as gravitational waves. The ideal source of gravitational waves would be some extremely heavy system that is oscillating in a rhythmic way. Then they would send out gravitational waves. When the wave hits a region of space, distances between objects increase and decrease rhythmically as the wave passes. That should be something that an interferometer could detect. However, because gravity is such a weak force, these waves are extremely low amplitude and only massively heavy objects moving very fast will send out strong enough waves for us to detect. So the way they work is this. The theory goes that if a gravitational wave passes through the interferometer, let's say it is passing in one direction only, parallel to one of the arms, the test mass in that arm will in fact become bigger and smaller in a rhythmic way as the space it is in distorts. That would mean an effective change in the path length of that arm of the interferometer. So the effective length change between the two arms will mean that the light between the two is very slightly out of phase. The way it is set up is that the cavity is set to have destructive interference at the photodetector most of the time. That means the tiniest shift in path length difference between the two would show up as a very, very small signal rather than the zero that is the background signal. This is the LIGO Observatory. It stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. It consists of two L-shaped detectors with vacuum-filled arms four kilometers long. There are two of them built 3,000 kilometers apart but operating in unison. They can measure a motion 10,000 times smaller than an atomic nucleus. This is the smallest measurement ever performed by science. LIGO started up in 2002 looking for events with such strong quickly changing gravitational fields that they would send out detectable gravitational waves. The first one they found was the merger of two black holes. These would have been the remnants of a binary system of two massive stars that each eventually became supernovas and then descended into black holes. They'd be circling each other but losing energy and therefore spiraling inwards. So as they spiralled inwards, they would have got faster and faster until they merged in a massive explosion. Three more black hole mergers have been detected. And then in August 2017, for the first time, the merger of two neutron stars was detected. The special thing about this is that the black holes had been very, very hard to see with any kind of electromagnetic radiation because by their nature they don't give out radiation. But the merger of the neutron stars gave out a whole range of electromagnetic radiation. So the gravitational wave burst was accompanied by bursts throughout the entire electromagnetic spectrum. That meant there is a lot of information that can now be calculated about this particular event. We're going to have a look now at a very short video explaining the LIGO interferometer. LIGO's hits just keep on coming. After its first detection of merging black holes, swiftly followed by finding three more and then a Nobel Prize, 
the pair of gravitational wave detectors has made yet another huge discovery. On August 17, 2017, the observatory detected gravitational waves from two neutron stars spiraling together and merging. Just two seconds later, a so-called gamma-ray burst was detected by NASA's orbiting Fermi Gamma-ray Space Telescope and its Swift Space Telescope. Twelve hours after the wave was detected, a team from Las Campanas Observatory in Chile reported a new glowing optical source in galaxy NGC 4993 that was consistent with these findings. And with the advanced tip from LIGO, both radio and X-ray emissions were found a few days later, coming from the same neighborhood. Not only is this the first time LIGO has detected gravitational waves from a neutron star collision, it's also the first time that electromagnetic observations from conventional telescopes accompany the gravitational waves. At wavelengths ranging from ultra-short gamma rays to very long radio waves, the event was seen by observatories around the world. Because we now have visual information to go along with the gravitational waves, new discoveries are being made about the nature of neutron stars. The light coming from the collision showed spectral traces of lanthanides, a group of heavier elements towards the bottom of the periodic table. This strongly suggests that merging neutron stars have been responsible for the creation of heavy elements such as gold and platinum, a long-held theory. Not only that, but the shape of the gamma-ray burst was unusually weak. Gamma ray bursts are usually so strong that researchers assume that the gamma rays emerge from two back to back jets that shoot out of an explosion like narrow spotlights. The weaker gamma ray burst suggests it was produced when broader jets slammed into a cocoon of matter surrounding the merged neutron stars. While this finding is home to a lot of firsts, it won't be the last. Researchers are positive that with the large amount of gamma ray events out there and the increase in both gravitational and electromagnetic detector sensitivity, we'll be seeing a lot more of these combination events in the future.